Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're interested in an all-in-one flight controller for your brushless micro, say you had something go bad, maybe one of your ESCs quit working, and you just want to replace the whole thing without a lot of work, this is really the answer to that. This is the Aurora RC Color Mix Flat Tower Mini. Everything is already soldered up on here with the exception of your camera and your VTX and your receiver. And all of those ports are available on the very top of this flight controller. Very simple. And I'll show you how those go on there in just a second. But this is going to be an easy replacement. Uh, or if you want to start a new build on some other existing frame that you just got, you can do that very simply by just adding a few extra things on there. Now I have an air arsenal frame sitting here waiting for this exact flight controller and ESE combo. It fits right in the rear here and the camera goes up front. But this is going to be an easy build for this frame and that's one of the reasons that I got it. It already has everything on here that I need. I have 20 amp 4-in-1 ESCs on the bottom running D-Shot already on there. So that's really nice. I can hook it up to be a heli suite and I can program those ESCs and I can change motor direction. All you need to do is use these little solder tabs on the side here and solder on your motors on the side. And the rest of your components are pretty easy, pretty cut and dry for this one. So let me go ahead and pop the top off of it for you. And I'll show you the 4-in-1 ESC first and I'll show you the F3 flight controller after that. Now, one more thing before I get started with the overview on this. This is a 20 millimeter board, so if you're flying a five inch quad, don't get this confused with something that you can fly on your five inch quad, because it's quite a bit smaller. Guys have asked me, can I put one of these smaller flight controllers on a five inch quad? Maybe you could do that, but I think the motors might cause a problem with the setup. It might be too much voltage. So you really want to check, make sure that uh, your ESCs can handle the voltage that these motors are going to draw that you're putting on this flight controller. Um, I really wouldn't recommend this for a five inch quad. Uh, you can just get a larger board. This is the 30 millimeter Kakut by Hollybro, and this one would be a much better choice for something that you're going to fly five inch props on. So uh, these larger boards are actually made for your five inch quads. So uh, keep these on the mini and keep these on your five inch. You can also put this one on something like a 130, 150, 180, 200 and 250 size quads. So I disconnected the signal wire harness here and it just pops right off the flight controller. And now I can take this flight controller off and move it back. And now we can see the ESCs on the bottom. This is an all-in-one integrated PDB and ESC in one. So what makes that great is you don't have to have any extra POLU on here or you don't have to have any extra voltage regulator because this one already has voltage regulation and a built-in five volt, one amp VEC on here. So this is great because all your voltage is regulated. You've already got all your hardware on there, which is also nice. And you have tabs on top and bottom so that if you decide to run your motor wires underneath here and solder them to the bottom, that makes kind of a neater build if you start on the bottom and go across. Uh, don't worry about the wire configuration when you're bringing your motor wires over. Your three motor wires, it doesn't matter what order they're in because if one of the motors is spinning the wrong direction, you can fix that in BO Heli. So don't worry too much about that. Uh, also, they already have the power wire coming up to power the flight controller on the bottom, coming straight from the power source because this board can handle plenty of voltage. Uh, you're going to run this board probably up to about 3S, which is awesome. Now also guys, you're looking at this from the very top and this is nice because the layout they have for the motors is actually corresponding to the layout in Betaflight. So from the top of this ESC board, motor one goes here on these first three tabs. Motor two goes up here on these three tabs. Motor three back here on the back left, these three tabs and motor four goes up here on these front three tabs on the left. Now my favorite part, the flight controller. So the layout configuration is actually not too bad on this one. It's not too hard to decipher. Uh, it's clearly labeled on the bottom and all the printing seems to be legible, uh, like some of them that are kind of smudged and hard to read. This one's actually pretty nicely printed. Um, starting up first, we have where the receiver goes and that goes over here on these six ports. You have a choice of running PPM, SBUS and DSM2, which is pretty awesome for Spectrum users. FR Sky uh, also, FlySky guys, you should be able to hook up your iBus controller to this one as well. 
up at the very top you have your grounds your two ground ports right here and here you have three volt and five volt over on the right here the next two down the farthest one out to the edge there that one would be s bus and ppm on this port right here the next one over to it will be dsm for you spectrum guys running three volt uh, five volt you can run for s bus and ppm now down directly below that is where your camera hooks up to these four ports right here if you're using osd you need to do uh, all four of these to be able to get osd on your camera if you don't you only you can also power it using the five volt and ground there if you're just doing an all-in-one camera you're not worried about osd you can choose those bottom two ports right there this one is positive and that one is negative and these two ports up at the very top up here this is tx1 and rx1 all the way down at the bottom we have where the leds hook up to if you want to run an led strip on the back of your micro quad you can do that this is ground five volt and the signal for the leds now you're looking at the top of the board and they just stuck a sticker on here because they don't have an arrow anywhere printed on this board so uh, it's not over top of any of the solder ports that you need to get to so you can just kind of leave that there it's actually right over top of that f3 chip but that's going to be totally fine uh, you have your four 20 millimeter mounting brackets right here your usb port for hooking up to clean flight or beta flight i believe and they do have some printing on the top uh, they just don't have this side there just wasn't enough room here to print anything for you um, for putting on your receiver here and this was where your camera and osd went uh, leds down here and if you notice these two little tabs right here this is where your boot for flashing your firmware on this board is if you bridge these two with solder that will put this board into the bootloader mode to be able to flash and reflash this board uh, if you can't connect it to clean flight or beta flight you can do that with your soldering iron now after you're finished doing that you're going to reset all of your modes and all your settings in there so you'll have to after you do that reset up all your modes but once you're finished with flashing the firmware you have to undo those two so you'll have to use a solder sucker to suck this back off and separate those two tabs to actually get this to load back up in beta flight so if you've never done that before just a tip for the new guys and then this is where your buzzer is and this is also tx2 and rx2 and then you have up at the very top here was where we had tx1 and rx1 and right next to that we have where our signal port is coming up from our 4-in-1 esc to let the flight controller know which motor is which motor and get all the signal information for running your motors from your flight controller so that's about it for this little f3 overview hopefully that kind of explains some of the ports and and places where things go for you guys because uh, you know a lot of guys are intimidated by taking apart their micro and it just seems like a mess of wires inside there and uh, i just want you guys to be a little more in the loop about where things go on different flight controllers and, and i really want to try to explain some of these to you guys that's why we're doing more flight controller reviews so that you get sort of familiar with what things are some of the terms and uh, just try to take the complexity out of it for you if i can smooth out the road for your builds i definitely will try to do that for you on the channel uh, so like i said again i'm going to give a shout out to air arsenal you can check them out on airarsenal.com this is their awesome little frame that they sent me they have these super cool little 3d printed canopies that you can get uh, all in one flight camera goes up front here and you can have like a dipole antenna coming out the back so it'll make it a little more streamlined and i'm going to add some 1104 motors on here as well uh, in conjunction with that little four in one flight controller all in one flight controller so it's going to make it a super simple build and the coolest thing about these micros is the fact that you can build these i can build an entire quad in under a couple hours and uh, for those of you guys that have kids and you don't have much time this makes it a lot easier for for us to get up in the air and building um, and these are really small uh, and easy to fly in a lot of different places that's why i like these little micros so much because one they're super small you have tons of new places to fly no one really notices and two they're under the faa weight for registration so you don't have to do any registration for it and you really don't have to worry about it too much so before i end this video i just wanted to show you guys a little example of what this board looks like once it's mounted to a 97 millimeter 
frame using two inch props. Pretty amazing difference between something that is in the 200 class with five inch props on there. Uh, and this is the Shuriken X1 and this is that Kenny 97 from airarsenal.com. I'm going to do a full review on this one as well for you guys. I've been having a lot of fun with this frame. It's super awesome out in the field. Uh, it just, it seems to have a lot of float in air mode and uh, it flies like a, a, a larger multi-rotor which is kind of cool and you can fly it in a lot smaller spaces than you can a five inch so uh, stay tuned for that review coming up on the channel and as always thanks again for watching you guys please do subscribe i'll see you on the next one